All right, so ChatGPT just announced plugins and it's both an amazing, exciting thing and also mildly terrifying, so here's why. Now, firstly, ChatGPT, obviously amazing, that's why it's got to 100 million users, but fundamentally, it's still pretty constrained. The functionality is actually fairly limited, right? We're limited to the constraints of this box and also the tool is limited by the data that it's trained up on, so it only goes up until, even ChatGPT4 is only trained up on data up until 2021. So whilst ChatGPT is amazing and powerful and can give us loads of information, we still need to take that information to other websites or apps to actually do stuff. But with this announcement, OpenAI opens up some wild possibilities and in fact shows us a future where ChatGPT could become our primary interface with everything that we do online, right? The first app that we open in the morning, the app that we do all our shopping with, all our communication through, all our bookings through, all our lifestyle and time management through, becoming the last app that we close at night. So this is massive. So what's the announcement actually about? Well, let's look at the wording here because it's kind of key. We're beginning to extend ChatGPT's capabilities by teaching it to use plugins. Teaching it to use plugins. We're gonna come back to that phrasing later on. But for now, let's have a look at some of these initial plugins that are gonna be open from some of the, uh, the early partners in this. Whilst this plugin store is going to expand dramatically, um, this gives us a bit of an indication about some of the functionality that's going to be available. So for example, we've got Expedia and Kayak in travel. So we're going to be able to book our holidays through ChatGPT, potentially also sending it on little research projects, you know, uh, cross-reference flight times, availability and cost versus hotel availability. And maybe you could cross-reference all of this against typical weather conditions to find us the best time to go to a particular destination and, um, you know, book it for us. This is amazing. It, it's our little research assistant that can go off and compare lots of information from different sources. We also have some interesting stuff within shopping and e-commerce. Um, so we've got integrations here with Shop and Klarna. Now Shop is a really important partner because Shop is the app um, owned and run by Shopify and Shopify powers a huge number of the world's e-commerce stores. Klarna is also a very important partner because it plugs into a lot of the world's e-commerce stores. So between these two plugins, there is a huge amount of e-commerce data. Now for me, shopping is one of the main opportunities for ChatGPT to really disrupt a lot of people's industries. For example, if I'm Google shopping or I'm Amazon, I'm looking at this feeling slightly scared and here's why. With these two partners, ChatGPT will have a vast amount of up-to-date product information, including pricing information, but also including previous purchase history. Both of these plugins know your purchase history if you've used them at any point through the e-commerce stores that they operate on. That potentially, you know, if you have a look at how ChatGPT recommends products at the moment, we've tested this with our clients um, for our digital agency, and its recommendations are really, really limited. It basically recommends products that it's seen referenced online in its training data. But it's old training data, it doesn't really know you, it doesn't really know your preferences. All of that changes now because it will know your preferences and it'll be trained on up-to-date data. So that's really interesting. Uh, we've got a language tutor. Goodbye, Duolingo. Um, of course, we've got Zapier, which is gonna be really interesting for a lot of businesses because this allows it to connect to even more other apps. So with Zapier, you can connect to loads of different stuff like CRMs. For businesses, this will be huge. For example, imagine being able to connect ChatGPT to your customer database and also a browser which goes and has a look at each customer's websites. You could email each customer a tailored email based on the content on their website through your customer database, your CRM. You could send hundreds of thousands, millions of emails customized and tailored to each person instantly with absolutely no effort. This is completely mind blowing. So great for businesses. If you're an email recipient, of course, then prepare to get a lot of emails, but hey, at least it's gonna be tailored. Um, another really interesting app, I think, is this one here, Fiscal Note. Now, Fiscal Note, is a, a tool that not a lot of people will know about, um, but this is a tool which processes huge amounts of legal, political, and regulatory data. Now, this could be interesting for a couple of reasons. First, all of that data and information finding its way into ChatGPT and into the training models will make the tool better for everyone. But also, potentially, this opens up 
opportunities for businesses and politicians to use ChatGPT to actually inform their decision making, which is pretty wild if you think about it. Now, of course, this is just a snapshot of the early partners. And what I would expect, in fact, what we're already seeing is a lot of development companies are dropping everything that they're doing to focus on building uh, ChatGPT plugins as their top priority. So I think this is going to be the fastest growing app store that we have ever seen. But how is this thing actually going to work for users? Well, in the documentation, it says the model's goal is to help the user. ChatGPT will intelligently decide between calling a plugin and handling a user's query using its intrinsic knowledge. For example, the model may decide that a question about current events requires calling a browser plugin, but may feel comfortable answering a very simple math or science question without using a plugin. Interesting. This brings us on to the scary part, and the scary part starts here. You can think of plugins as tools that the model can learn how to use. Now, there was a paper published yesterday by Microsoft Research, who've had access to the core underlying GPT-4 model, not the ChatGPT version, but the core model. And this paper was called Sparks of Artificial General Intelligence, or AGI. Now, one of the reasons that they're saying this model is showing sparks of AGI is its ability to use tools. Not just use tools, but decide when it needs tools, and even potentially build its own tools. This is where things get a little bit scary, because the reason that humans are the dominant species on this planet is because we learned how to use and develop tools. What we're doing here by releasing it and giving it all of these tools is we are basically unlocking it from its constraints, we're unlocking it from the constraints of its training data, and we're allowing outside developers to expand its capabilities, to enhance what it could do. Say a hammer means that I've got more power as a human than I would just have in my body, or a computer means that I've got more mental power than I would just have in my mind. Well, with all of these tools that we're gonna be building in and giving ChatGPT the capability to use, we are expanding the capabilities of ChatGPT. If it can start then building its own tools, this thing grows exponentially. Now, I think that OpenAI knows that this is a dangerous step. If you have a look, in some of the wording here, we are gradually rolling out plugins in ChatGPT so we can study their real world use, impact, and safety and alignment challenges. I think they know that they're gonna run into danger here. So I think this is really exciting, but also this is a huge moment for AI and potentially for humanity. Let me know your thoughts in the comments.